Welcome back. Today I'm going to be going over all the settings inside the checkout page. It's a little bit of a long one, but if you stick through it, you'll see some really great results at the end. All right, let's go over the checkout page because there's a number of customizations that you need to do in here in order to make sure that your Shopify store runs smoothly. So if we hop over to the dashboard and we go to settings down at the bottom, we're going to come up with a bunch of settings that we need to go and modify in order to make sure your store runs smoothly. So the one we're going to go over today is the checkout page. So the checkout page has a couple customizations on it. Now, depending on which platform you're on, if you're on Shopify core, and that means if you're on a Shopify plan that's called Shopify Basic, Shopify, or Shopify Advanced, you only have the ability to modify the checkout with logos and colors. You can't modify the checkout flow, you can't modify any of the graphics, you can't put any JavaScript or anything on there. But if you're on Shopify Plus, now Shopify Plus being the $2,000 a month starting plan for enterprise or existing merchants who already have an e-commerce set system set up and they need to match that current e-commerce system this is a video where we're going to go through shopify core and what the customizations are available for that not the shopify plus there's another video where i go through how to modify the checkout on shopify plus if you're interested in it so if you're on the checkout page you can go to customize checkout and when you go in here you can basically customize the style, you can add your background images, you can add your logo, and you can change some of the positioning. So if you go to theme settings um, and you go to checkout, the first thing you can do is you can cha change the background image. So say we want to uh, select an image. Let's, let's grab an image here. Uh, let's do some beautiful mountains. Let's select that one. Okay, puts it across our banner at the top. Um, and then if we want to go and select our logo, we can go and upload a logo. So I'm gonna just grab the Shopify logo and I'm gonna put that one in there, great. And then what we wanna do is we want to go and change the positioning. So we can change the positioning to left, center or right. When we do this, um, it's going to be changing the logo positioning. So whether we want it on the left, the center or the right, it looks better on the left because it's in this dark uh, area, but also keep in mind that it's important to check all of your customizations on both tablet and on iPhone. So it seems to work there. It, it seems to work pretty good. Um, the next thing we want to check is the logo size. Some people like a larger logo, so we can go larger. I personally prefer the, the, the medium size. We can select the background image, so the image of the background piece here. Now it's going to tile this image, so when we select it, you'll see what I mean by tiling. It will take its dimensions and then it will tile it along. I wouldn't recommend using this as an image, but it can be done if you want to. Uh, I usually typically like to pick a background color um, if I want it to match my brand. So I'm gonna pick like a nice teal blue and I'm gonna remove the image um, because it won't apply if I have an image there. The image is gonna take priority over the, uh, the, 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 the color. Form fields, we can make them transparent or white. I'm gonna go with uh, white so that they have some contrast. And then we're over into the order summary on the right hand side. So we can also choose a color for that as well maybe something with a little bit of contrast in it so that we can see the two differences. And then we can chain or the fonts so that they match the font that we have set up in our store. We have some accent colors, which we can change as well. And our button colors, which we can change, as, uh, change on there as well. And that's pretty much it. That's the extent of what you can change on the custom checkout page. Now, if you're on Shopify Plus, you can move all the, the components around, you can hide things, you can change things up. Um, for this particular demo, this is what you can go in and change when you're talking about the checkout page. It's important to remember that Shopify has A-B tested the crap out of their, their, um, their checkout page. There is very little that you can do to the checkout page in order to make it more efficient than the built-in Shopify page. Definitely, it's worth it to change a couple of the colors. It's definitely worth it to add your logo in there for brand recognition. But when it comes to efficiency for getting people to pay with an online checkout, the Shopify checkout page is the most efficient way of doing it. So any 
additions or changes that you're going to make to those pages is most likely going to reduce your conversion rate. So just keep that in mind if you're going to be making changes. The next thing we want to do is we want to go back into checkout and we want to go through some of the other pieces that we have down here. So the customer accounts. When it comes to customer accounts, you can make the decision on whether customer accounts are optional. That's the preferred method. Um, you can say count customer accounts are disabled. You don't want to grab any customer information. Or you, if you have, say, a website that requires age verification or you're selling um, something that is specifically to a member base. So say you have a VIP um, only store where people have to log in in order to uh, have access to purchasing some of your products, that's when you would go and select accounts are required. For this store, we're going to say accounts are optional because we want people to be able to one, check out at a guest, as a guest if they're in a hurry, and two, be able to check out as a customer um, and keep their information if they are um, a, a long-term customer and they want those reward points. Now, um, if someone checks out as a guest and they later go on and create an account, their account history will filter into their account. It does it based on email address or telephone number, which comes to our next option, which is do you want to check out with the customer using their phone number or their email, or do you just want to make sure that you get an email from every customer? This is a personal preference. Um, They've just, re they've just introduced this being able to check out with the phone number in the last year or so uh, because a lot of the markets that they're going into now, not everybody has an email address, but most people who are doing online shopping do have a phone number so that they can, they can attach orders by phone number as well if that's something that um, you want to do. You can select whether customers are going to receive updates by uh, SMS messages. So similar to when you hit the fulfillment message, um, there's an SMS uh, template that you can modify so that it will uh, send a message to them and show them exactly how or show them their updates via text. And then we come down to our form options. So when they're checking out, uh, last name only um, requires first and last name if that's something that you require. Uh, company, whether it's hidden, optional, or required. Uh, apartment address line two, again, if it's optional. And shipping address phone number. This is definitely one that you want to watch out for. Um, if you're using a app like Shippo or another um, app to do your shipping estimates, most shipping providers require a phone number for you to be able to print a shipping label. So it's important to make sure that you, if that's something that you're going to be doing, that you want to select it as required. Um, so that the, the shipping company can call the person when they're going to drop off the uh, package. So you want to make sure that you're capturing that every time. This is the only one in checkout that I would recommend that you turn on as required. Okay, coming down uh, for order processing, this is more internal stuff. This is how you want your store to respond when uh, order comes through. So uh, we want to use a shipping address as the billing address by default. That is a pretty common uh, selection. If you don't want to do that, you can turn that off. Also, you can enable address auto completion. So Google giving you the option to uh, say that where it is. Now, why would you want to disable auto um, if you're in a country that might not have roads in it, I know that a lot of uh, places in um, Mexico, for example, where there is quite a huge population that works online, um, a lot of the addresses don't show up on Google Maps. So um, if you have auto address, uh, autocomplete in there, it may get the wrong address and may force the user to look for an address that doesn't actually exist. So it's important to understand your customers and where they're shopping from, whether or not to turn this on. Uh, next thing is auto fulfillment. So if you have a fulfillment service that is going to be shipping out your items, I would highly recommend that you set it to automatically fulfill this order. Now you can notify the customer of their shipment and automatically fulfill all orders, even though it's high risk of fraud if you wish. Um, I would only recommend turning this on if you have a fulfillment service that uses an app that's able to push back the tracking numbers and all the fulfillment data or else you're going to cause yourself a lot more customer service headaches because they're going to get the fulfillment request, it won't have the tracking number in it and then you're going to have to send the tracking number afterwards. So once you get rolling a little bit and you have your system set up and you've got a, a process in place, 
then I would turn on automatic. For now, I would say automatically fulfill only the gift cards, which means basically uh, send the customer a gift card, um, and then you go in and fulfill orders uh, manually when they're ready to be shipped out. Okay, uh, we have a couple options that after an order has been fulfilled and paid, we can automatically archive the order. Again, this is something that you can turn on after you've gotten a little bit used to how your website works. It will automatically archive the order, taking it off your dashboard to try and clean it up a little bit. Finally, we've got some additional scripts that you can put in here. These additional scripts are here for you to be able to add your uh, conversion code scripts, so things from Google Analytics and from Facebook Analytics to see that your uh, the, the users that you have paid for advertising has netted you in sales. So this is where you would add those additional scripts in there. Finally, we have email marketing, whether you want to pre-select the sign up option. Uh, this is dependent on where you live in the world, whether this is uh, allowed to be pre-selected uh, by law or not. If you're in Europe, in the European Union, um, there is some sensitive laws around pre-signing people up for uh, email marketing so be sure to check your your local uh, laws where you have that um, and then we get into abandoned cart checkouts so if someone has reached the point where they've entered in all their information all they have left to do is hit the buy button which is something people usually do uh, in order to figure out whether what the shipping and what the final ticket price is going to be so they'll go through the whole checkout process they'll get right to the end and then they'll stop. They may get distracted, they may be on their phone, they may lose their internet connection. There could be a number of reasons why uh, they abandon the checkout. Having a abandoned checkout reminder is a really good uh, way to net back some of those sales. So um, one of the hours that is recommended is 10 hours later. So um, you can turn on automatic abandoned checkouts um, and then you can hit 10 hours later. You can also turn it so that anyone who abandons a checkout versus any of the email subscribers who abandon the checkout. So you can, you can set it to only email people if they have already signed up for your email subscription or you can set it to uh, everyone. Again, this comes down to your local laws on whether you can do that as well. Um, and then finally, we have checkout language. I have a video that will go into a little bit more detail about checkout language. It's a little bit to take on in this video. And if you're still with me, uh, I'm sure that you're getting ready to, uh, to finish this one off. So um, that's everything that you need to know about the checkout settings inside Shopify. Thanks for coming by. I hope that this was helpful. If it was, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if that's something that you're into. And we'll see you in the next one.